Welcome to Youthology Resources and thank you for joining us for another podcast. Listen, there's been a lot of confusion when it comes to the call of God on our lives. Why do we exist? What is our vocational place? How about our purpose in the kingdom of God? Especially when it comes to the call to ministry and the call to minister. We opened that up last week. We defined those last week. Here's an easy way to look at it. I like to say it this way. All of us are called to minister as Christians, but few of us are called to ministry. Think about that. All of us are called to minister, but few of us are called to ministry. We talked about that. We broke down Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12 in part one last week. And here's the way, the easiest way to say it is that some are called to prepare all for the work of Christian service. Some are called to prepare all for the work of Christian service. There was an emphasis in Next Gen Ministry the last 20 years that changed everything. We swung the pendulum of emphasis from, uh, from students who are called to, to uh, ministry over to students who are called to uh, education, government, uh, math and sciences, uh, you know, calls to uh, business or even calls to uh, the home as homemakers, right? Moms or uh, fathers or mothers. But what we did is we lost that call to the ministry, okay? And with that emphasis. And so I wanna talk about restoring that and listen, we're not talking about the detriment of one or the other. And I don't want to swing the pendulum all the way back to not talk about those who are called to minister, right? But let's stay on this topic of the call to ministry to have a more holistic look. Um, here are some practical discussions on the traits of being called to ministry, okay? As a vocation in the office of pastor, right? Or apostle, prophet evangelist, teacher. Let me give you a practical understanding of the traits or characteristics of the call to ministry, okay? Those of us, the few of us who are called to prepare the rest of us to minister. Okay, you'll, you'll, you'll get the language. Uh, our young people have to understand these traits so that they can see for the, literally see for themselves. God may have a specific purpose for them in the ministry setting. How will you know that there is a call to ministry on your life? For some, it may be as simple as the voice of God in their spirit and they've known it all of their life. Or the word of God uh, of a spiritual friend who confirms something that God has spoken to you. Maybe a conversation with an elder or a, a, you know, a leader. Maybe it was a respected spiritual leader who recognized God's call on your life and spoke something to you. And you never even knew it was there, but it's somebody that you respect. And over the years that has grown, or maybe it happened in camp or convention. Either way, here are some of the practical guidelines to help students understand if they're called to ministry as a vocation. Let me give you five. Number one, a clear love for God. If you're wondering about whether there is a call to ministry on your life, start with this foundational principle. You will have a spiritual hunger for God. Now, maybe right now, you're not spiritually strong yourself, right? Maybe in this moment, um, you don't have a hunger for God, but you do have this awareness and sensitivity to the Spirit. I can remember while I was running from the call to ministry upon my own life, that I was still always thinking about God and his presence. And man, I was living in such conviction for the way that, that uh, for the way I had run from God. Even when I was not serving him, I still sensed his presence. There were times when his presence was so heavy upon me and I could sense him. It, it's hard to explain, but you will have a constant awareness of his presence on your life. I think that's one of, the, one of the most important traits. If you are wondering about whether there is a 
specific call to ministry on your life. This is one of the essential traits that I see in effective leaders, okay? All right, number two. Number one, a love for God. Number two, a love for people. Hey, let's not get this wrong. Let's get this straight. If you don't like people, you probably are not called to ministry. But if you have this empathy toward people, it won't matter, listen, if they're church people, unchurched people, the misfit or the pop kid, look no further than the example of Jesus with this. Remember how he defined his purpose in life and calling? He said these words, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Do you see that, Mark, uh, Mark chapter 10? He didn't come to be served, he came to serve. Now, what does that look like? Here are some of the things that I experienced in my own life when I accepted the call of God to uh, ministry. In this, in this specific area of a love for people, you will have feelings of defending or standing up against bullying. You will be moved by the brokenness in people's life, in people's lives around you. You will defend the defenseless. You will speak for the voiceless. You will heal the wounded. It is a love for people that turns into compassion and action. Okay, number three, a love for spiritual growth. Now, this may be in your own life, but it will also be the responsibility that you bear for other people and their spiritual formation and their discipleship. Um, this cannot be lost. If you are not satisfied with your walk with Christ, that is a good sign of God's call on your life to ministry. If you are concerned about the spiritual formation of others, that is a good sign of God's call on your own life to ministry. This is not about platforms and microphones and footprints on social media. This is about people, okay? Maybe you feel conviction stronger than others. Maybe you are sensitive to the Spirit and will hold yourself to a higher standard. And, and then you turn that into your love for others. Listen, a love for others. Another part of this that, that I think is intriguing is that you are drawn to spiritual moments, altars and worship times, right? Man, the discernment, your discernment is high on the spiritual gifts. So think about, all right, hey, number four, a love for the church. One of the key traits of the call to ministry is your love for the church. Now, listen, I know you may not like the church, but you love the church, okay? I might be talking to some PKs right now, but anyway, um, I believe there's a call on your life to ministry if you defend the church and you love the church and you stand up for her because it's Christ's bride. And hear me, if you take care of the church, God will take care of you because it is his greatest love. And there's this supernatural aspect of the church. We're, obviously we're talking about people, but this, this, the, the love for the people, the love for the church, the love for his presence in the church draws you. You are broken in his presence often when you're in church. And this reverence for the church and for spiritual leaders that is placed in you is a great sign that God may have an important call in your life for ministry. All right, hey, the last one is a love for leadership, a love to be involved. And I'm not talking about a cavalier, authoritarian trait. I'm talking about a servant-minded trait where you want to place yourself in a position of leading. You walk in the room and you want to do something about what's there, right? It's not about applause. It's not about positions or titles. It is about helping people find purpose in life and being a willing leader with one of the most important gifts of helps, right? The gift of helps, leadership. And I love what Paul said after everything he had been through. He said his greatest concern was not about the hardship, not about the loss, not about the beatings or the abandonment or the shipwrecks. It was more about his love for God, his love for the church, and this incredible impact that he wanted to have on his generation. You remember those words? 
on above all of this, he said, is my love and concern for the church. Listen, what should I do when I know that I am called to ministry? Let me finish with just a couple of little things that I think practical things that you could do to help you uh, develop this call to ministry. Number one, I think one of the most important things that you can do is to find a mentor, a rabbi, a coach. All of us need someone in our life that uh, we can go to who has been where we want to be, right? Following somebody who's been where we want to be. Maybe it's a next-gen pastor in the church, a parachurch leader, like an FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes leader, or maybe a Christian coach at your school. Just like any other student would prepare for their vocational calling, you can do the same thing right now, okay? Which leads me to my next point, my last point here. The next thing that I would do is to tell you to get involved in your children's ministry, your youth ministry, your young adult ministry at your church. Get involved right now. Get involved in a parachurch ministry. Get involved with um, your clubs at school. Some of the greatest lessons that you can learn um, being on a team right now are so invaluable and you'll take with you for a long time. Listen, thank you again for joining us in this podcast, part two of The Calling and what that looks like for the call to ministry and the call to minister, right? So take a look at it last week, take a look at it this week and join us again next week for another topic in youth leadership. All you gotta do is click on the link tree in the socials where you can read the manuscript on the website, listen to the iTunes podcast or watch the video on our YouTube channel. All right, hey, God bless. Have a great week.